colleagues, House Bill 2815C establishes the interagency compliance network for the purposes of collecting the appropriate taxes and appropriate revenues to other agencies uh, from businesses and employers and uh, sole proprietors that are cheating the system, essentially, and not paying their fair share. Colleagues, this is an issue that's uh, been around for a while. Uh, this uh, interagency compliance network is actually a pilot program that was authorized through the Independent Contractor Steering Committee in the 2003 legis legislature. Uh, this uh, uh, issue came forward as we were investigating through the construction uh, contractor's uh, recommendations from their task force. Uh, on particular issues where contractors were unlicensed or were not paying into workers' comp, were not paying into unemployment insurance, and were not paying payroll tax into the state of Oregon. Uh, permission to uh, use a visual aid? I'm sorry. Uh, Representative Holby requests unanimous consent for purpose of using a visual aid. Is there objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Representative Holby. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, take a look sometime. Oregon Business Magazine, April 2009. The $18 billion shadow economy in Oregon. That's how much there is going on of unreported income and cash economy in the state of Oregon. We had contractors come forward in our committee saying if the state of Oregon does not start enforcing the laws, we are going to go out of business or we're going to have to start cheating. We cannot compete with people that don't pay their fair share, that don't pay uh, unemployment insurance on their workers, and that operate in a cash economy. Colleagues, this bill, take a look at the revenue impact statement, is a great investment for the state of Oregon. It will return money back to the state for this modest investment. Just in this biennium, this won't even start until 2010. It's estimated it will bring $3.8 million to the general fund, $3.8 million into other funds. The following biennium in 2011-13, it brings $13.3 million to the general fund, $13.3 to other funds. 2013-2015, it brings 15.2 million to the general fund and 15.2 to other funds, mostly those other funds being in the worker comp uh, uh, funds and the unemployment insurance trust funds. Colleagues, this levels the playing field for legitimate businesses out there that are struggling to compete in this world and compete in our state. It also forms a new way of funding government programs by not just funding a particular agency, but funding a program and making them work together, making them not operate uh, in, a, in a silo where they actually have to cooperate with each other and share information with each other, a much more efficient way to do business. This system has been shown in other states to be very effective, and colleagues, I really think this is uh, uh, long overdue to look at uh, our agencies and make them more efficient, make them accountable uh, to the state for enforcing our laws. I urge an I vote. Thank you. Further discussion, Representative Barnhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Uh, colleagues, this uh, bill uh, uh, actually wound its way through three committees, including the Revenue Committee which is uh, why I'm familiar with it. I, I simply want to note that Oregon currently has sidewalls all around uh, various agency activities. If the agency that's charged with enforcing the employment tax discovers that employment tax is not being paid, they don't necessarily pass information to the Department of Revenue for income taxes or to other departments around licensing requirements or other things that the state has an interest in. Colleagues, that's a, a significant problem, and I think Representative Holvey pointed out one of the issues. He has worked this bill uh, very hard. Uh, it, it, is, it is a piece of the compliance work that we need to do. And the key section of this bill 
is on the second page, where it, it basically, in lines uh, 24 through uh, 28, uh, it indicates that members of the interagency compliance network that have entered into agreement with other member agencies to provide information to the agency may do so notwithstanding uh, confidentiality, confidentiality laws that we have. Uh, information provided uh, may be used by the agency only for the purpose of enforcing compliance laws. And what that means, of course, is that when an agency discovers one of these compliance problems, it has the authority under this statute to go out to the other agencies and provide them with information that will allow the other agencies to enforce uh, the, re the requirements of law that they are entitled to do. The, the, the key point for me is that this make, increases the fairness of our systems. We expect taxpayers to uh, voluntary, voluntarily file tax returns and to pay their taxes. We expect those who are responsible for workers' comp coverage or for employment uh, uh, tax benefits to pay those. We expect those uh, who go out in a, in a profession uh, that requires a skill, if it requires a license, to obtain that license. Uh, this uh, bill is a, is a great bill because when those things are not happening, legitimate businesses are being hurt and the, and the funds that the public is entitled to to pay for basic programs are not being collected. This bill that makes no changes in any of those underlying laws. It simply means that we will be able to actually collect uh, the, the, the funds that are required and that those who are responsible for complying with our laws do so, that they have the skills necessary to get the licenses they're supposed to have and that they pay the taxes they're supposed to pay. And it also means that legitimate businesses will not have to compete uh, with those who uh, 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 violate the law and undercut them. I urge and I vote. Further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I, I would like to um, say a few more words. Uh, colleagues, there was a uh, uh, case uh, not too uh, last year, uh, not too long ago, uh, a contractor working on a prevailing wage uh, job at the Clatsop County Courthouse was actually uh, falsifying their records uh, in order to uh, effectively pay uh, people less than what was required by law. When a contractor is allowed to get away with that repeatedly, they basically underbid, and unfairly so, legitimate contractors out there. The reason I mention this is this contractor did receive a violation from Boley. However, the information didn't uh, get to other agencies to enforce other portions of the law. It would rem remained a question whether or not the correct uh, unemployment insurance was paid, whether the correct workers' comp was paid, whether the correct amount of revenue was paid to this state. And as well, what about the, what about the fraud piece? Did anybody contact the Department of Justice? That's what this bill aims at uh, correcting, making sure that uh, our agencies are talking to each other that our agencies are cooperating and sharing information and working together to enforce the laws of this state. We had, as I mentioned, Western Partitions, the largest drywall contractor in this state, come to our committee say, saying, please enforce your laws. Small contractor, fence contractor, Huckleberry Fence, uh, Brad Cook, came to our committee saying, I can't compete against this cash economy. There's, there's landscape contractors out there paying cash and getting away with it. I can't compete against that. What am I supposed to do? I turn, I turn these people into the state and they, they, don't have, they, don't have the, uh, they don't have the enforcement capacity to take it on. Colleagues, we're missing a lot of money in this state, as I mentioned. It's over a billion and a quarter dollars that we are missing because we don't enforce our laws. It's time our state is accountable to the taxpayers, the people that are paying for these agencies. Those who have the opinion that the bill should pass will vote aye. Those opposed, no. The clerk will open the voting system.
House Bill 2815C, having received the constitutional majority, is declared passed.